Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Amina and if you are new here, I'd absolutely love it if you could press subscribe if you haven't subscribed already and keep on watching to learn about the different kinds of degrees that there are out there. I know a lot of you have just graduated so congratulations if you did um, and you might be thinking about going into a master's or maybe a PhD or maybe you just don't know what you want to do next. I'm going to be sharing with you what the differences are between the different degree types. MSc, MRes, BSc, BSc Honours, a PhD, an MPhil, all of these terms. But before I start, I'd like to thank PDF Element for sponsoring this short segment of the video. The PDF Element is a PDF software that allows you to pretty much do anything with PDFs. So you can annotate, you can draw, you can upload, you can convert them from PDF to Word. Now I, to be honest, I only found out about this software through them emailing me about this collaboration. I wish I had known about it during my PhD, my master's, because the number of times that I've gone to the internet and typed PDF to Word converter, and I have to upload it online and then download it as a Word document, and it really got very cumbersome. The format was messed up. It was just so frustrating. When I came to advise my Fiverr exams or just to go over for my presentations at the end of the term, I had to print out the whole document, the whole lab report, and then annotate it. Whereas this software allows you to pretty much do all of that online you can highlight whatever you want you can annotate you can make comments first of all i really like this comment section where you can add text onto wherever it is that you want in your document go over this bit again or to add a reference or whatever you want and then what that does later is you can see on the right hand side here you've got a tab where you can go to the comments list and you can see where you've made all the comments and this is especially good where you've got a really long report like this one and you just want to be able to quickly go to the sections that you want to go to whilst you're editing or when you're revising or something. The second thing I like is the fact that you can scan and annotate so you can just write whatever you want if you go to the markup you can just write and highlight wherever you like and this stays on the document and you can save it like that i also love that you can add links now this is something that i always have wanted to do i have never thought was ever possible so for example you can add a link that links you to a, a web file so for example this image might have come from a certain place so i can just highlight it add the web page there and when i come back to editing it i it's just very very easy i don't have to have bookmarks and i just had so many notebooks that i had lying around and this really helps with that i'll be leaving the links down below for a free download um, and also a 50% off for the full version so please go and see the links down below for all of that starting off with an MS an MS degree gives you a master of research degree now this is a great degree if you want to go into a PhD if you want to carry on with research this gives you a full 12 months a full year of just research an MRes allows you to also publish papers so during my MRes, I published two papers I did two six month placements so it's really good for someone who wants to carry on in research and maybe isn't a hundred percent sure but you do want to try it out because you are going to be working in labs or facilities just like that you would in a PhD so you'll be working alongside PhD students alongside postdocs you have a supervisor so it will almost be like being a PhD student except it's just a six month or 12 month program. It also gives you a huge advantage when you're applying for PhDs because it shows that you've actually done a whole year in a laboratory environment as opposed to someone that does a MSc um, which is essentially an extension of a degree. It was definitely one of my best years um, of education. The downsides of an MRes is that it can be quite isolating, it isn't like your degree, you don't have a class, a group. You do have people that have joined the course at the same time as you, but all of you are in different labs. So some of you are in different buildings across the campuses, or some of you are in completely different labs. You will rarely see each other except for that one talk component, which isn't necessarily all of you at the same time anyway. So it is quite isolating, you don't necessarily feel like you have a cohort. Um, so you do need to make sure that you are someone who can be somewhat sociable and get on with people in the lab um, who may be at a higher level than you, but that's completely okay. Um, but if you are okay with having that kind of distance a little bit, I guess, from your uh, from your peers, then this would be okay for you. There's also a very large jump from a bachelor's to a master's. Uh, doing an MRes is very different to doing a bachelor's. A bachelor's is very kind of structured. You have your modules, you have your assignments, you have your exams. It's just it's just a normal degree. Whereas with an MRes, you are thrown into a lab. You need to write a lab report. A hundred percent of the marks come from that lab report. You need to do presentations. You need to be kind of do powerpoints and um, posters and speak to people. And it is a very very big jump. If you if you enjoy that sort of structure, then I would recommend you to do a B. BSc, but if you do want to be kind of thrown into the deep end, then I would highly recommend MRes. Like I said, I really enjoyed it 
but it is very different to a, a bachelor's. The, the MRes sort of facilitates the transition between the bachelor's and the PhD. It's sort of that in between. I definitely wouldn't recommend you going straight from a bachelor's to a PhD, which by the way, you can do. But this gives you that sort of middle ground where you're learning about research. It was during this year that I learned how to write a report and I had an amazing, amazing uh, PhD student that taught me how to write a report and ever since then I've only received very minor feedback on my edits on reports. Moving on to a Master of Science, so MSc. Now MSc's like I said before are just an extension of a bachelor's degree. I really don't think there's any difference. The lectures are the same, the content is uh, the same. I saw the content when I was deciding what between MRes or an MSc and I don't feel like it was very different. I just felt like there was more sort of research aspects to it and research skills and a longer sort of research project. But apart from that, I didn't like the idea of going into more exams and by that point I was absolutely sick of exams. You do feel confident with essay writing and exams and the typical, you know, lectures and lecture notes and all of that sort of structure, then you'll really enjoy uh, an MSc because it does go into more depth of the subjects that you enjoy. There is more of an option when it comes to courses, there are loads of uh, master courses out there so you've got more options to really get into a specific field like neuroscience and even more specific than that you can really choose a field that you want to focus on and you learn not only the, the research but also you learn some more theory so it really helps you if you know that you want to maybe go into a PhD or you don't necessarily want to, this just gives you a bit more information about whatever subject it is that you want to learn about. A huge negative of an MSc is the fact that there just isn't enough research aspects to it. There's about a six week research project for most courses, it just really isn't enough. You get the same amount from an undergrad as well, it just isn't enough to prove that you've done enough sort of research in, in, a, in the laboratory environment if you do want to go into a PhD. It really is just an extension of a BSc which is why I did not go into it and I'm really glad that I didn't. I think masters are like 12, 13 grand now, 12, 13 thousand I think. When I did it, it was 6,000 at Imperial, but I think now it's like 10 or 11, so it's gone up so And the last master qualification is the MPhil. You may or may not have heard of this one before, but there is something called the Masters of Philosophy, and it is sort of uh, attached to the PhD, which is the Doctor of Philosophy. The MPhil is sort of an in-between uh, an MRes and a PhD. So typically, one doesn't apply for an MPhil. You usually apply for a PhD and Unfortunately, if you don't necessarily make it all the way through or you end up failing your upgrade, which is halfway through the PhD, sometimes you're awarded an MPhil, so it doesn't really have a very good name. The reputation of an MPhil has been sort of damaged as a result of being known as the degree that those that fail their PhD end up with, so that's something to just be aware of. It is completely research, so it's quite similar actually to the MRes I would say, it's completely research, so there are no taught units, you have to come up with some independent research, so that's where it's a bit different to an MRes. With an MRes you're working in someone else's lab and you just have to write a research project, it doesn't really matter what you end up doing, whereas an MPhil you do have to produce independent research, which is why it's similar to a PhD. And you also have to write a thesis, so even if you don't make it all the way through, you still have to write a sort of mini thesis to explain what you've done, and you also have a viva as well. So like I said, usually if you don't pass the upgrade, and you've done, but you have done some research, then you are awarded an MPhil, which is the disadvantage. Like I said, it is synonymous with those that have failed their PhDs. Unfortunately, um, it's just, that's just what it's known for. It really depends on what you want to do afterwards. I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing an MPhil. Um, I recommend either just doing an MSc or an MRes. But um, if it is an option and that, if it is an option and you really do like the course and you want to go for it, then go for it. I mean, nothing should stop you, but just be aware of the reputation that it has and um, the kind, I think it's a bit more challenging uh, getting an MPhil. You don't really have the same sort of guidance that you do with an actual master's like an MPhil. MRes or an MSc. All of these master's degrees I've just spoken about are all one year full-time programs and in fact the MRes is a full 12 months so you start in September and you end in August so it's a full year. The MSc programs are usually just one academic year so you start in October and then you end in like May or June so it's the same as like I said just an undergraduate degree so be aware of that because what can happen is you finish your MRes and you have to start your PhD literally the next week. I was I was lucky that my supervisor said just take a break so I had I think I took a two-month break and I started in November 
whereas some labs um, you have to start straight away some programs you need to start straight away um, and if you go into a job it might be in September the starting date so you won't have much time to sort of relax between an MRES and going into the next thing whereas with an MSc you finish in June so you do have the whole summer to kind of you know <laughs> relax a little bit before you start the next thing that you want to do so again just be aware of that if you are thinking about I don't know holiday plans or whatever you want to do if you do an MRES you won't have one <laughs> basically and lastly a PhD so what is a PhD a PhD is a doctoral degree so it's what I graduated with last year and it's a degree that takes in the UK between three to four years minimum three years maximum well full-time maximum four years ish um, it took me three years to finish the research and then I was lucky enough to have a supervisor that kept some money back to give us about six months to write so it's awarded to those that have written and have discovered a new contribution in their field of research so it could be in anything but as long as you've written an original thesis that has contributed something new to the field regardless of how small or how big it is as long as you found out something new to that field then you can be awarded a PhD so every PhD everyone that has a PhD has found out has discovered something completely new that no one knew before so even I did I found something I found a protein interaction that was totally totally new that no one knew about before and uh, if you want to read my thesis by the way I'll leave the link for it down below it's it's available uh, on the UCL library so you can go ahead and download it and go and read my thesis if you feel like you want to and another good thing about PhD is it allows you to continue in academia so it gives you the opportunity to start your own lab to be a lecturer to become a professor to carry on a research so if you are passionate about research go for it. I think a PhD you absolutely love. It isn't easy, it is a struggle, it is sometimes quite challenging, but it definitely is rewarding and it's, I think it, it gives you the freedom to kind of be creative in a, in a subject that otherwise isn't. I genuinely felt like science sort of stunted my creativity a little bit, but then when I went to my PhD, I slowly discovered that actually you're still within boundaries, but you do have the ability to just say, oh, you know what, I think this experiment is going to work really well to discover this or to show this or to disprove this and you do have a certain element of creative sort of input with your research um so i quite like that and it's still something that i really enjoy about research what it does do is give you a lot of transferable skills so i can now go and work in pretty much any sector i can go and work in finance they love phds i can go and work in consultancy again they have a whole phd recruitment team i can go and work in teaching in academia I can literally go and work anywhere oh a friend worked a friend and um, went and trained in patent law so yeah you can literally go and work anywhere because the skills that you've learned the analytical skills your kind of time management your, all those skills that you are developing throughout your PhD is invaluable in other sectors so although you may no longer enjoy research the skills that you have built and the resilience that you have built through doing a phd means that you are able to transfer that into to be honest any field the only thing about a bsc to be careful with is that not all courses give you accreditation so accreditation means you are able to work professionally in whatever field it is so for example biomedical science not all courses not all biomedical science courses will give you accreditation as a biomedical scientist so make sure that you look out for that when applying to a course does it give you accreditation now that doesn't mean it doesn't mean that because the university is better has a higher ranking that you'll be accredited actually it's quite the contrary I know that at King's it's not an accredited course whereas I believe at Queen Mary if I'm not mistaken it was an accredited course so make sure that you look out for that because that would mean the difference between you graduating and going straight into a job or you graduating and having to do another course to then be qualified because you're not qualified to go into a professional job if you're not accredited so be really careful with that I cannot believe degrees are still not accredited but what's the point because you now have to go and do another course do let me know if you found this helpful and do let me know what you guys are applying for to do in September I've got a lot more university videos coming up so do keep your eyes peeled for that and let me know if there are any videos that you want me to film as well and I'll see you guys in my next video bye